Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about interpreted design pattern. Interpreted design pattern is also a design pattern from the Gang of Four design pattern. Interpreted design pattern is a behavioral design pattern. The main intent of this pattern is given a language, define a representation of its grammar along with an interpreter that uses the representation to interpret sentences in the language. So if we have to break it down, what it means is it's essentially once you have a language, once you define a language, you define a representation of its grammar also and an interpreter which uses the representation to interpret what the sentence in the language is. And a classic example for that is in a real life scenario, an interpreter of different languages. For example, if you know English and you want to have a conversation with someone who knows only German, you can have an interpreter which can interpret German as well as English and act as a mode of communicator between the two. When it comes to software, we have a lot of example. And the fundamental example is in case of interpreted language like JavaScript, you have an interpreter which does the interpretation of the JavaScript code. And if we get into one level up, the other classic example is whenever you use common line tools, you provide certain commands which ultimately is interpreted by an interpreter and then it takes an action on the underlying code of the tool. So to demonstrate the interpreter design pattern, I'm going to create a class which does the same thing. It will create a common line interface for communicating with the underlying software. And for the purpose of this example, I'm going to take a very simple case of string conversion. Now, when it comes to interpreter design pattern, there are three main player in this design pattern. The first one is the context. The context will contain both the value, which is a string in most cases, especially when we're dealing with a common line argument and an expression, which is some sort of character using which will understand what action to take. And then it will have an expression evaluator, which evaluates the expression to understand what to do. And then finally, we will have an interpreter which takes the incoming string and the expression and then works with the expression evaluator to ultimately interpret the expression and provide the output. So to do that, first we are going to create a context class, which is going to be a simple class, which will have two properties, a value and an expression. And in our case, both will be string. So we are going to create a context class and we can create a constructor. And here we'll have string expression and string value. And we can create both as properties. The value will provide as a setter also because it will be manipulated from the interpreter. And then next what we are going to do is we are going to create the expression. Now for our example, what we want to do is that we want to handle a common line argument to convert a string into lower or upper case. So what we're going to have is we're going to first have an I expression, which is an interface, which will have a single method called evaluate. And it will take the context because it is going to work on the context for evaluation. And for us, we're going to have two types of expressions, a lowercase expression and an uppercase expression, because that's all we are going to handle, at least for this example. So we're going to create an internal class, lowercase expression. And here, all we are going to do is we're going to say context dot value is equal to context dot value dot two lower. And similarly, we're going to have another class 
called uppercase expression and here similarly we are going to have the context value is going to change to two upper. These are the two expressions that we are going to have. And now we define the context, we define the expressions, we are going to support two expression. Now it is time to create the interpreter, which is going to ultimately use the expression to interpret the incoming message. So for the interpreter class, we are going to have a single method. So we're going to have public void interpret. And interpret is going to take a context and and next what we're going to have is here first we are going to get the expressions now remember the expression can be a set of expressions in our case or in this example it does not make sense to have a set of expression but there are cases where you will have set of expressions. So we are going to support a set of expressions. So it will be var equal to context dot expression dot split. And here we are going to split based on space. That's our splitting criteria. And then what we can do is we can create the types of expressions uh, this is basically going to be a new list of i expression because at this point we will be creating the expression and then what we can do is we can create for each loop of expression and here we can say if expression expression is equal to dash l then we want to add the lowercase lowercase expression into our expression types array and else if expression is equal to dash u what we are going to do is we can now say expression types dot add and here we are going to say new uppercase expression and then after that what we are going to do is now that we have identified which expression is going to use which expression type that means we have done half of our interpretation now it is time for us to evaluate the expressions so then what we can do is we can have another for each loop and we can say item in expression types and then what we are going to do here, here we are going to say item dot evaluate. And we are going to pass the incoming context. And after everything is evaluated, we can just do console dot right line. And here we can do the context dot value because the value would have been mutated based on the expression into the desired outcome. As simple as that. And then what we can do now is we can go into the program and in program what we are going to do is we're going to say console dot write line because this is where we want to get the input from the user and we can say provide a word with expression and then we can say var word is equal to console dot read line and then what we can do is we can extract the value out of it so we can say value is equal to word dot substring of zero and the length is word dot index of dash anything before dash is what is our word and then for the expressions what we can do is we can say bar expressions and here we're going to say expressions is equal to again word dot substring but here the index where it starts from is the index of dash and till 
the end of the user's input. And next, what we are going to do is we're going to create interpreter. It's equal to new interpreter. And here, interpreter does not have any constructor. And I have to add the namespace. And then what we can do is we can do interpreter dot interpret. And for the interpreter, it takes a context. So we can create a new context. And the first parameter is the expression. And the second parameter is the value. So now if we run this application and if we pass a word or a sentence, actually it should have been provide a sentence because I'm going to provide a sentence, not a word, but that's okay. So if we say, hello there, and if we pass L for lowercase, now it converted the entire sentence into lowercase. Similarly, if we pass and you pass lower and then upper. Now here what is going to happen is it was going to add both the expression, lower as well as upper. But since it is adding lower first and upper later, upper will be executed second and it is going to convert everything into uppercase and as expected. And from here, you can see that we can create for a particular input, we can create multiple expressions and we can do multiple things out of the expression. But as you can see, this illustrate how you can implement an interpreter pattern to interpret any language and provide a desired outcome. So in terms of the usage of interpreter pattern, I would say it is it is, it, this is a design pattern or this is a use case which you will not come across very often in a real world scenarios. There are very rare cases where we would need to build an interpreter and for which we'll be using an interpreter design pattern. But the situation where we need it, this is an extremely handy and very well defined design pattern to provide a solution for this kind of problem. So that's all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.